Okay. Let me explain how we do our software test planning in our company. In our company, actually, there's a master test plan template that can be used for each project. As we know, the test plan document is generally prepared by the QA lead or senior QA lead, as it is in my company. I mean, our software test planning document is prepared by our QA lead. In test planning, we determine some specific issues like who are the testers, what are the roles and responsibilities of each tester, what about the test strategy, which features will be tested, which testing types will be performed, and in which environment will, will the testing be executed, due date, deadline, schedule, resources, inputs, outputs, entry and exit criteria, of course. So our test plan is a detailed document that describes the test strategy, objectives, schedule, estimation, deliverables, and resources like human resources and system resources required to perform testings for a software product. So our test plan helps all of us in the team understand the details of testing and guides our thinking also. And also it is like a rule book which needs to be followed during the testing phase. So we follow eight steps to create a software test planning in our company. First of all, we analyze the blueprint of the product and try to understand the requirements by the client and then we design the test strategy test objectives test criteria and then we make resource planning like human resources and system resources as i said and we plan test environment we make our schedules and estimations we determine the test deliverables let's start with the first step so we analyze the blueprint of the product how can we test a product without any information about it? The answer is, of course, impossible. We must learn about the product thoroughly before testing it. So we analyze the blueprint of the application based on the documents, as we know, such as software requirement specification document, I mean SRS, and software design specification document, I mean SDS, just prepared by the business analyst team during the software development life cycle, I mean SDLC. Because of this reason, I research clients and the end users to understand their needs and expectations from the application, like who will use this website, what is it used for, how will it work, and what are software and hardware the product uses. And as a QA test engineer, if I am, let's say, unclear on any items about the product and requirements, then I go talk with the product owner, developer, designer, my QA lead, as well as customer to get more information about the product. And the second step about uh, doing software test planning is to develop the test strategy document. Test strategy is a critical step in making our test plan in software testing. So a test strategy document is a high level document and it is developed, developed by our project manager in our company. This document defines like the project's testing objectives and the means to achieve them, determines testing effort and costs. So during in our test strategy document, first of all, we define the scope of testing. So the components of the system to be tested like hardware, software, and any testing types are defined as in scope. But on the other hand, the components of the system that will not be tested also need to be clearly defined as being out of scope. For example, we can say that stress testing is out of scope but smoke and recreation testings are in scope. And then in our test strategy document, we identify the testing type. As we know, there are tons of testing types for the testing software product. Our team cannot have enough effort, enough effort and time to handle all kinds of testing. 
Because of this reason, our test manager set a priority of the testing types like which testing types should be focused for web application testing and also which testing types should be ignored for saving cost. Designating necessary testing types is so important for achieving early detection of, the, of all the defects before releasing the product to the customer as well as end user, users in the market. <clears throat> and then in our test strategy document, we specify the risks, risks and the other issues. So I, we underline the potential risks that we might meet during the software testing process. For example, one risk may be, the, may be that a team member lacks the required skills for website testing and we can mitigate or decrease this kind of risk by planning training courses to skill up that guy. Or let's say that the project schedule is too tight, it is hard to, com hard to complete this project on time. So we can handle it by setting test priority for each test activity. Let's say another risk may be like Scrum Master has poor management skills and we can sort it out by planning leadership training for our Scrum Master. And then in our test strategy document, we create test logistics. In test logistics, our test manager answers the questions like who will test and when will the test occur? And the third step of software testing process is to define the test objectives. The objectives of testing can vary depending upon the context of the component or system being tested, the test level, and the software development lifecycle model. So these differences may include, for example, during component testing, let's give an example. One objective may be to find as many failures as possible so that the Underlying defects are identified and fixed early. And another objective may be to increase code coverage of the component tests. Let's give another example. During user acceptance testing, one objective may be to confirm that the system works as expected and satisfies requirements. Another objective of this testing, I mean acceptance, acceptance testing, maybe to give information to stakeholders about the risk of releasing the system at a given time. And then during our software testing process, we define test criteria. There are two types of test criteria. These are suspension criteria, and the second one is exit criteria. If the suspension criteria are met during testing, the active test cycle will be suspended until the criteria are resolved. For example, if our team members report that there are 40% of test cases failed, and then we can suspend testing until the development team fixes all the failed cases. What about the exit criteria? The exit criteria are the targeted results of the test and are necessary before proceeding to the next phase of development. For example, we can accept that, let's say 95% of all critical test cases must pass. And then the fifth step is resource planning. These are human resources could be the QA lead, testers and test administrators needed to complete our project. And system resources may be servers like web servers, database servers, and application servers, and test tools like Selenium, Cucumber, API and SQL, and network systems, including LAN, LAN, and internet to simulate and the real business and user environment. And additionally, of course, we need computers to connect the web server. And the sixth step of software planning process is to plan the, the test environment. To plan the testing environment, we describe the hardware and software environment in which the tests will be run. This includes the test environment setup, test data, and any specific tools or configurations needed. And the seventh step is schedule and estimation. 
So the seventh uh, step of software test planning is to outline the schedule for the testing process, including milestones and deadlines, as well as sprint cycles. Moreover, uh, we also include the schedule for test execution, test review, and test closure. And the eighth step is test deliverables. Our test deliverables are in three ways. These are before the testing phase, during the testing, and thirdly, I mean finally, after the testing cycles. So test deliverables provided just before the testing phase are uh, such as test plans document, test case documents, and test design specifications. Test deliverables provided during the testing are such as test scripts, simulators, test data, test traceability metrics, error logs, and execution logs. And what about the test deliverables provided after the testing cycles uh, over are test results and reports, defect reports, installation and test procedures, guidelines, and release notes. I think that's all about uh, how we do our software test planning in our company. Thank you so much.